Hello and welcome to this week's Friday Update. This week, I spoke to the seniors at two of Knox County's more unique schools. Richard Oakley is an alternative school, serving students who have things like behavioral issues or are on long-term suspension. One thing that I'd like to point out about these kids is that we should never give up on them or let them give up on themselves. As I told this group, life is about overcoming challenges and obstacles. Sometimes challenges and obstacles of our own making. As long as you keep going, as long as you keep trying, you never know what tomorrow will bring. And there's a good chance it'll be better than today. If you quit, however, you lose, period, end of story. My hat is off to the faculty and staff at Richard Yokely who work very hard to make a difference in the lives of these students. I also spoke to the seniors at L&M STEM Academy. L&M STEM Academy is located in the old L&M Railroad Station. That in itself is pretty cool. And with their STEM curriculum, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the faculty at L&M encourage their students to, as their website says, move real world problems into the classroom. Met with some poli-sci majors from UT and fielded their questions. I helped out at the ribbon cutting at Kate's Lash Lounge and Wax Studio. I did take a rain check on the full body wax in, however. I also attended Glamiversary, celebrating the 15 year anniversary of Southeastern Dermatology. And I toured the McClung Museum of Natural History and Culture on the UT campus. The McClung Museum is one of Knox County's real gems. Had a great time there. And I welcomed the East Tennessee Regional Leadership Association to Knox County. I also attended the chili cook-off and auction at Juvenile Court organized by Judge Tim Irwin and his staff. This is a great event. It raises a lot of money to buy Christmas gifts for kids who are in DCS custody. On Monday, I had the pleasure of introducing the next governor of Tennessee, Bill Lee, at his campaign stop in Knoxville. Like me, Governor-elect Lee, who was running in his first campaign, brings a completely new perspective to government. I'm very excited to work with him as all of us work to help Tennessee lead the nation. I'd also like to congratulate my predecessor and my good friend, Tim Burchett, who will be the next U.S. Congressman from District 2. I attended a luncheon in honor of the Tennessee Supreme Court, which was sponsored by the East Tennessee Lawyers Association for Women. Tennessee is the only state in the country in which the Supreme Court justices travel around the state to admit new lawyers into the bar. That's pretty neat. But what's even better was hearing the remarks by Chief Justice Jeffrey Bivens. Justice Bivens said that comprehensive criminal justice reform is the court's legislative priority. He even said something that I often say. We cannot incarcerate our way out of the opioid problem. According to Justice Bivens, we must, we must expand our drug, veterans, and mental health courts, and we have to explore things like pretrial release for misdemeanor offenses. At a local level, our law enforcement and detention resources are stressed all across Tennessee. I'm glad that officials like Justice Bivens recognize this and hope that we can start a constructive dialogue and put policies in place which will help mitigate these issues. This morning, the Knoxville Chamber of Commerce hosted Governor Bill Haslam. The topic of Governor Haslam's talk was how Tennessee can lead. What has happened over the eight-year tenure of Governor Haslam has been nothing short of remarkable. Tennessee has transformed itself into a leading automotive manufacturer. We have no state income tax, and we have one of the lowest state and local tax burdens in the entire country. We are making great strides in our education system and are developing a world-class workforce. My hat is off to Governor Haslam and the General Assembly for implementing common sense policies that have helped to make the life of everyone in our state better. I'd also like to talk about some issues which have been ongoing. First, we continue to explore the possibility of selling the AJ building and relocating Knox County Schools. The TVA East Tower continues to be the most viable alternative at this time. Of course, we want to make sure that whatever we decide is what's best for the taxpayers in Knox County, so we're looking at every possible angle. Nevertheless, I will be prepared to make my recommendation very soon. The second issue is the potential BMX park at South Doyle Middle School. What I intend to do is make sure that the upper athletic fields at the school are repaired and we deliver what we promised as far as usability and facilities. The BMX track itself will be treated as a separate issue. We're currently awaiting a cost analysis 
for the track, and that will determine how we proceed with this project, if at all. Finally, I want to make everyone aware of some issues uh, that are accompanying the closure of Tanova Hospital on Broadway and what that could mean for our area. There's no doubt that fewer hospital beds is going to put an additional strain on our healthcare system, especially in this case, OBGYN services. Dr. Martha Buchanan, who does a wonderful job as head of the county's health department, is talking with our area's other hospitals to get ahead of this issue. Another issue is ambulance service. AMR, which contracts with the county to provide ambulance services, is seeing increased wait times at this hospital due to staffing issues at the hospital. Unfortunately, that ripples throughout their entire operation as it means fewer ambulances are available for transport. AMR is working with area hospitals to rectify this problem, so hopefully it won't be an issue much longer. Knox County's October Employees of the Month were Trey Young from IT and Junior Walker from Engineering and Public Works. I get a real kick out of presenting these awards because it's so rewarding to recognize the folks who provide our community with outstanding service. Congratulations again to Trey and Junior. Due to a scheduling conflict, I wasn't able to make it to a lunch in the community this week, but next week I will be at Nick and Jay's on Level Road on Thursday, noon. Come on out and join me for a burger and fries. Oh, and today is the 40th birthday of the best finance director in Tennessee and the best dressed finance director in the state of Tennessee, Knox County's very own Chris Caldwell. Happy birthday, Chris, and I will see everyone next Friday.